Welcome back, baseball fans, to a special All-Star Break edition. Look at the first half regular season and explain the format of this full baseball season I play in the year 2022. Uh, just real quickly, I'll start with the overall standings. We'll go in the American League. Currently at the All-Star Break, um, we are looking at, that's last year's, let's go to this year's. And uh, here we go. Okie dokie. All right. Sorry about that, folks. The American League in the year 2022, it's been a rough kind of year as teams just sort of melted towards the middle, it seems. The American League East, the Boston Red Sox, um, we can do a comparison of a year ago, that'd be fun. Yeah, there you go. So last year um, at the All-Star break, the Red Sox were 16 and eight and were sitting with the one seed at that time. Uh, with the Yankees a half game back and the Orioles, I mean, they were really rolling. Three teams are playing over 600 ball, beating up on the Toronto Blue Jays. That's last year. This year, it is that the Toronto Blue Jays have really played spoiler this year, well beyond spoiler. They're 15 to 15. Done a great job putting a piece, piece in a roster together with nice balance of good pitching, decent bullpen, you know. Uh, the glaring holes aren't so glaring. They've got some good and very good players, no Hall of Famers, of course. But when you look at it, the Red Sox just three over, and the Orioles two over, and the Yankees very disappointing, 400, 500, 500. So this whole division is uh, wide open still. And if the season ended today, the Red Sox would have a three seed, and the Orioles would be a wild card. Now, let's go look at the American League North. The Tigers are sitting with the number one seed this year. Last year, the Tigers, this whole, look at this. This is the division last year. They were just getting wasted by the rest of the American League. Everybody had a losing record. It was very embarrassing last year, what went on here. Ultimately, what we remember is that the Detroit Tigers finished, got to win this division in the postseason tournament and uh, went all the way to the World Series with a middling 500 record. Well, that was last year. This year, this division's much better. The Tigers are currently the number one seed at the All-Star break for a team who was in the World Series last year and lost. The Indians had the worst record in baseball last year and they are slipping a little bit. They're just a game over 500. They had a great start and kind of pittered out a little bit, but they'd kind of sneak in as a wild card presently. And the expansion team, Ohio players and the Expos are, you know, competitive, more competitive than they were a year ago. American League Midwest. Uh, Twins, this is a very competitive division like the East, but still just a middling couple games over 500 for a Twins team that is supposed to be good. White Sox, we thought they'd be improved, but we also thought they might be over 500. They're at it. The Brewers are awful, but look, they're only 400 or 500, which isn't that bad. The Royals are projected to win this division, and they have been a huge disappointment. Looking a year ago at this time in that division, those Royals were 17 and 12 and putting it all together. And they were, you know, still a year or two away from getting George Brett on this team, but uh, it was looking great, but it just didn't happen. That's what the division looked like last year at this time. And in the America League West, the Dynasty A's have a cake easy schedule of bad opponents and they're playing 17 and 12. They would have the number two seed, but really they are so talented. You know, they really 17 and 12, nothing, nothing to sneeze at folks, but they really sh are playing down to their opponents. And actually Seattle being just a game under and the Rangers being just a game under is overachievement. The Angels are disappointing because they won this division last year. Last year they overachieved, this year the Angels underachieved at the All-Star break. Let's take a peek again at last year. You see the Angels were four over and the A's were at the top and yeah. Also, the American League was a plus seven. This is net wins and losses. They were plus seven last year. And all this mediocrity this year means they are minus 11. 11 under 500. National League is wasting the American League in interleague battles. 
Let's go to the National League. Let's begin in the National League East, where the defending world champion New York Mets reside. They are putting on a clinic this year. 20, the maximum number of games you can win at the All-Star break, and we'll get into that when we show the format of the league. Uh, the surprising Marlins, uh, they were down 0-3 against the Braves and came back with four straight wins, and the Braves lost 4-5 to the Mets. So the Marlins came out of nowhere to leapfrog the Braves in second place. This is really sad, because the Braves are a great baseball team. They just, just inexplicably got blown out by the Marlins and Mets. They lost 8 out of 9. They were 14-7 and seven at one point, and it just... It just flamed out on them. Phillies are terrible, and uh, they were better than this last year. We'll take a peek at last year at the break, and you'll see that. You'll notice that the Mets uh, were only a three seed and just, you know, playing decent ball last year. And they turned it on, of course, in the postseason and the playoffs. There's those Phillies just a game under 500, and you see the rest. Okay, let's go to the north. The Cincinnati Reds. Kind of co-seeds with the, with the Mets, the Reds are. 19-8, and eight, wasting their opposition. The only time the Reds did not win a series is when they played the Mets. So basically, these teams are tied because somebody had to win Game 5 of that series. Um, and then under the Cardinals, a respectable 500 record when it wasn't their era. Same with the Cubs. These Pirates, though, huge, huge, biggest story of this league. Uh, this is the 1971 World Champions of the 1972 best record in the National League, and they just slumped horribly. They got swept by the Cardinals right before the All-Star break. Um, we look at last year, and the Reds were doing the same kind of thing. But the Pirates, again, were slumping, but they had a slightly better record. And there's the Cardinals. The Cubs are a lot worse. Let's go now to the Mountain Division. Vegas won this division last year, and they're winning it again with a game-and-a-half lead over a Colorado team that won it two years ago. Also, the other two teams aren't doing so bad. When you look at the net wins for this division, it's plus four, five, minus three. It's a plus two. That's not bad. Four fictional invented teams as part of expanding from 24 to 32 teams, and they're two games over 500. That's very good. Last year, this division... Portland was just ahead of, of Las Vegas, and the Arizona and Colorado were horrible. And this division was well under 500. And lastly, the National League West this year. The LA Dodgers were the story up until that last series at the All-Star break. They were the number one team in baseball, and the Houston Astros had the worst April of any team in baseball. And then... The Astros beat the Dodgers 4 out of 5. The Astros beat the Padres 4 to 1 prior to that. The Astros were under 500, and they get to 2 over. Um, and the Giants slumped at a bad time. But even with that, uh, excuse me, the Dodgers slumped at a bad time. But even with that slump, look, they're still playing 630 ball. And these same three teams a year ago were doing the same kind of stuff. Last year, Dodgers were 19 and 12, Giants and Astros with San Diego. This was probably the most consistent division over the two-year span. But the big difference, of course, is that the National League had a losing record last year, and the National League is rolling plus 11 this year. That credit needs to go to the Dodgers, needs to go to the Mets and Reds, and you see there's still the Phillies are bad, and the Padres, they're pretty much toast. They are, they're the only two teams that are out of it, completely out of it right now. Just two of the National League teams. Even Portland has a slim chance of getting into the playoffs. So what are the playoffs? Let's go look at that format. The format of my league. I created this little uh, spreadsheet two years ago when I was explaining it, so I'm going to continue to use it. I play three um, parts of my season. It starts in March um, around St. Patrick's Day and it goes through the All-Star break. And I play, each team plays six series. You play your three divisional rivals a best of seven. 
you play two other uh, seated, similar seated teams in your league, a best of five, and one interleague on a rotating basis. The league and interleague are rotating, just like the NFL rotates those things. And so you have three best of sevens, two best of fives, one best of three. And by math, uh, in a best of seven, you need four wins, and a best of five, you need three, and you need two. What this calculates is the minimum and maximum games a team could play. In these best of sevens, you could play a minimum of 12 of everything as a sweep or a maximum of 21. In the best of fives, a minimum of six, max 10. And of course, in the best of three, minimum of two, max of three. What it means is the minimum number of games played is 20. The maximum number of games played is 34. I'll even put that on here this time. And then the average number of games a, a major league team would play here, halfway between 20 and 34 is 27. You multiply that by the 16 games that's played, so you don't double count, and it's 432 games expected. That's how many games are expected in this format. You, you expect to play 432 games between March and July, the All-Star break, in the format I play. In the year 2020, I play 443. The idea for a to be competitive is that you want to exceed the minimum number of games played. If you go less than that, it means you're getting routes. You're getting lots of sweeps. The more games you play, the closer you're getting to the game seven. So in 2020, we were plus 11. Last year, even better, more, comp more competitive, better drafted, more competitive competition. Plus 25. Let's see where we are in 2022. We want to look at number of games played. We can go right to stats for this present season. And we could look at the actual spreadsheet here. We, this number is represented in many places. But uh, we'll just go right over to here. It's the first place I look. Uh, wins and losses. And which one? That's last year. Let's go to this year. Yeah, this is this year. 460. We can also find this by going, we're going to find a nice convenient way of looking at the number 460. There we go. This is all the wins and losses and saves and ERAs every pitcher in all of baseball. And you add that up and you get 460 and 460. 460 games played this year. Three uh, net of plus three from a year ago. Let's put 460 there. And uh, that's just a uh, format. But uh, you take the difference of uh, that minus that divided by that. And uh, you have, you'll show the uh, percentage improvement of, you know. So we were 2.5% better than average in 2020. 5.7 last year. This year, 6% better. Just incremental. Uh, really raising the bar. It's, you know, this is very tight here. It's going to be hard to get to 462 or 463 or 464. And eventually this number is going to... We're going to just have years and seasons where there are going to be more blowouts and shorter series, and that number could go down. But at least for now, for three years that I've been doing this on YouTube, where you guys have been watching this stuff, I've had more and more competition. Okay, so that leads us to the All-Star break. And uh, we'll have an All-Star game broadcast, and that'll be a separate video. We'll have an All-Star selection show. But after the All-Star game is over with, we have something that I call the postseason tournament. So it's three sec segments. I'm gonna put a one here. Segment one, the regular season. Segment two, this postseason tournament, and segment three, your playoffs. A lot of times the words postseason and playoffs are combined into one thing. This way I can divide it into three segments. 460 pieces in segment one. Segment two is not quite as big. It's a postseason tournament that runs from the middle of July, as soon as the All-Star game is over, 
middle of July and runs till about August 15th. It's about a three or four week tournament. And the purpose of this tournament is to slowly remove the bad teams from the league to get to a playoff field. So, you'll see this uh, U07, U05, U03 is the term I use. We had best of sevens, best of fives, and best of threes in our regular season. But in the first round of the postseason tournament, it is up to seven. You're going to play seven games, but you don't have to play all of seven games. It could be done before that. It's like I consider this to be the last seven games of the season. Imagine if all of baseball was tied into mediocrity between the All-Star break and the last seven games of September. The last seven games, uh, these are two distinct, make two distinctions. One distinction is who is in first place. And one distinction is who is in fourth place. The purpose is you factor in the games behind in seven games to determine who's in first and who's in second. Is it a best of seven? Well, it can be. But it could be that the second place team needs to win five of the seven games or six of the seven games. Or there could be a tiebreaker involved where they need to win five out of eight games or six out of eight games. And that's all based on the records. The purpose is to play up to seven games so that we know who's in first and who's in last. Two plays one, four plays three. The ones and twos, of course, are safe. And the team that loses three and four is eliminated. So this eliminates eight fourth place teams. And the reason they are eliminated is that you only have four division winners and two wild cards. So there's no mathematical way a fourth place team can make the playoffs. So after these seven games are played, the second round of the tournament is up to five games. In this format, uh, the ones, I call this a friendly, the ones in the division you don't play up here, um, you play two of the three divisions up here. The th uh, third division you didn't play in the regular season, you play here. The ones play each other in what I call a friendly, meaning that nobody gets eliminated. It's just for seeding purposes. And the threes visit the twos. And the purpose here is to eliminate eight more teams. Now, third place teams, a third place team in one division can be better than a second place team in another division. The point is simply to eliminate eight teams to get us to 16. We start with 32, minus eight, we get to 24, minus eight, we get to 16. At this point, we're down to up to three games with eight, seven, six, and five teams who aren't uh, in the leading in the division playing in the simple eight versus five, seven versus six. That's an up to three. And when you do that, you're going to eliminate four more teams to get to 12. And those 12 teams are your playoffs in round three. And that's the playoffs start in late August and run through Labor Day weekend. And the playoffs are four division winners and two wild cards, which is what the NFL used to be until recently. So we have a wild card round, best of five. Divisional round, all the rest of the rounds are best of sevens. The divisional round, by the way, is the 2-2-1-1-1 format that the NBA uses prior to the finals. That is to give an advantage to the number one and number two seeds who would have buys. And these rounds of the playoffs wrap up for a World Series. The World Series is held Labor Day weekend. And there you have it. There is the three segments of my season. 460 games here, another 120 games here roughly, and the playoffs are about another 80 games, 
and when you add it all together, you get close to 660 games. That's a full season. That's, um, you know, a full season of baseball that I play in this carryover league that lasts from March to Labor Day. And again, the 660 could be off by whatever. Uh, it'll, it might exceed that because we already have 460 game played here. And these are all just rough estimates. Again, I can't be sure because it's all up to, you know, it's not a static number. They're all, we don't know exactly how many games we'll be playing. So with that, let's take a look at the postseason schedule, which happens after the All-Star break. And I'll show you how we determine how many games that is. Let's go to our season here. Here we go. Let's start with the, the first thing I do are the seven game division titles. Let's go also look at the stats here in a second. So Baltimore and Boston will play. The Orioles are half a game back. I'll scroll over to here. I in in next to the name the, the first time they met, Baltimore beat Boston four games to three, so they're plus one. But that series, Baltimore had home field, so now Boston has home field. So with seven games remaining and the Orioles a half game back, it is a best of seven. The reason it is the best of seven is even if the Orioles um they would be a half game ahead, but they would also be plus two in the tiebreaker. The idea is you have to uh, have at least a one game or a tiebreaker um, to, determ to uh, determine if you are in first or second place. In this case, Baltimore would only be a half a game ahead of Boston, but they'd be plus two in the, in the tie head to head tiebreaker. Now in this series, Cleveland, Detroit, I have the games behind for the team. And again, uh, the away and home is just flipped from the regular season schedule, right? Boston played at Baltimore in the regular season schedule for home field. Detroit played at Cleveland, now it's flipped. So these are just flipped from what the regular season schedule was. This is how many games back a team is, and this is the net result of the first series. So in this, the Indians are three games back the Tigers. It's a simple, Cleveland needs to win five of seven. A uh, best of seven is not gonna work. Best of seven only would still leave them two games back. If they win five of seven, they'd be tied, but the Indians would be plus one in the tiebreaker. Plus three minus Detroit's plus two is plus one. So Cleveland, all they would need, to, all they would need is to win five of seven. Minnesota and the White Sox. The White Sox are a uh, game back, but they're also plus one, the tiebreaker. Simple best of seven. Uh, if the White Sox win a best of seven, they'd be dead even tied, but the White Sox would be plus two. Seattle, Oakland. Seattle, three back. This is just like up here. Same, same scenario. Um, even though they're plus two, Seattle, five, two gets them tied, and they would be plus five in the tiebreaker at that point. But you could see that if, if the A's win three games and, and Seattle goes 4-3, they're still two games behind, and Oakland wins that division. So they need a 5-2. It gets harder here in the National League East. Florida had the dubious distinction of catching the Braves for second place, putting them five and a half behind the Mets. 5-2 is not going to work. 6-1 is not going to work. Six out of seven still leaves a half game back, but it does give you a tiebreaker. It gives you a tiebreaker, so 7-1. That would put Florida a half game ahead of the Mets, and Florida would have the tiebreaker. Same situation here with the Cardinals, five and a half back. They need to go 7-1. 7-1 against the Reds. They would catch them by half a game on the tiebreaker. Colorado and Vegas. This one's a game and a half back, so you have to kind of look closely at the calculation here. Let's say Colorado was 
going to play a best of seven and win it four games to three. If they win it four games to three, they'd be a half a game back. However, they'd lose the tiebreaker to Vegas. Vegas would have a half game lead and still have a plus one in the tiebreaker, which means, unfortunately, Colorado has to win five to two. So that's a tough break for Colorado, that a 4-3 or a 5-3 isn't good enough. It's got to be 5-2. And Houston and the Dodgers, um, again, 4-3 for Houston would still put them a game and a half behind the Dodgers, and that does not invite a tiebreaker. So they need a 5-2. And there you have it. This is what the teams need to do for the distinction of first and second. It doesn't mean anybody's clinched. All we're trying to do is to play these games to distinguish first and second. And then here is where the threes and fours are playing each other. And you can see the math again. The Yankees are two and a half behind Toronto. But Toronto has a plus two, so the Yankees have to win five out of seven. Think about it. The Yankees have to beat a fictional team five out of seven games to uh, avoid being eliminated in the first round of the postseason tournament. Expos two and a half back. They also need a 5-2. In a suddenly competitive Merrickly Midwest, the Royals, a best of seven, just a game back of Milwaukee. Though preseason said that Kansas City should have had a great year. Kansas City's underachieved, Milwaukee's overachieved. California's had a terrible year after winning the division last year, but they clearly overachieved last year. They're just not that talented. Neither is Texas, really. But California stumbled a lot. They're two back. They need a 5-2. Philadelphia's played horrible baseball lately, and the Braves have tumbled into third place. Fortunately for the Braves, after the brutal beatings to the Marlins and Mets, they get the Cupcake Phillies, who have to win six out of seven. This is how the Braves can right their ship and begin an, uh, an attempt at, at catching a wild card spot. The Pirates, this is huge. This is their way of getting into the playoffs. They gotta play a best of seven against the Cubs. Anything can happen in a best of seven. Pirates have to win this, or they're toast. Um, and you'd like a team like the Pirates that's three games under 500 to sweep the Cubs here. If they sweep the Cubs, you get a plus four. And suddenly the Pirates would be a game over 500. And then the next round of the tournament becomes a lot easier when we uh, go to the next up to fives. So Pittsburgh, best of seven, but they got to rub it into the Cubs. They got to bury the Cubs. And the Cubs could be one of the biggest spoilers. Uh, to help change baseball history by eliminating the Pittsburgh Pirates, one of the best teams in this era. So that's the Cubs' mission. If they win the series, that's gravy. But if they force it to Game 6 or Game 7, that's kind of also a victory for the Cubs, who practically, you know, they're not really competing for a playoff spot. Here's a nice little best of seven between Portland and Arizona. Uh, Whoever wins this series will probably get bounced the next round. And the Giants get a cupcake this year. Um, last year they drew the... Uh, last year they would have played the Dodgers for the division. This year they're in the... Uh, they're eating in the kitchen while the grown-ups are eating in the dining room, you could say. Astros and Dodgers. And the Giants get the cupcake Padres. And the Padres have to win six out of seven. So, yeah. Don't expect to see... Six and ones and five twos have happened. That happens. You, you know, you don't have to just play best of seven for four wins. I've seen teams go five zero, just rip off five straight wins, and we're done. So, um, yeah. So five to two is what you need, and that is the next round of the postseason tournament. We'll take a quick look at stats, and we'll call it a wrap. We're going to look at overall batting average for the league this year. Mets are leading the league in hitting. That's unbelievable. I said before before last year's season, I said if the Mets hit 250, they could win the National League East. They won the World Series. This year, this team is hitting 305 and pacing baseball with Seaver. Kuzman, Matt Lack, and Tug McGraw. 
that is un unreal. And there are those Braves hanging with them with the big power numbers and home runs, as you would expect. There's your Reds, the Dodgers, you know, Giants. These all make some sense. Even the Pirates are hitting pretty well. At the bottom, you know, Expos, Mariners. Here's the Baltimore Orioles. Obviously doing it with their pitching and with all the home runs. But the Orioles batting average, they're, they're hanging out with the Mariners, the Rangers, and the Padres. I mean, that's bad. Bad for a team that won the World Series two years ago. Then we'll look at the same data sorted by earn run average. And that explains a lot. There's your Orioles. Leading the league with a 307 team ERA. But 238. There's your Dodgers. The Dodgers are probably the best of both worlds. 315 ERA with the Mets right here. 305 and 334. Dodgers and Mets. The, if you combine the hitting and pitching, they're probably the two best teams. White Sox. The Reds are probably... You're not going to see the Reds, you know, and you know why. Where's Cincinnati? 424 ERA. It's really, the Reds played a couple games where they got bombed by the Giants and the Mets, you know, double digits, and that kills your league ERA. And once you give up a ton of runs in like one or two, a couple games, it's almost impossible to bring your team ERA down. So a lot of this Red uh, pitching, uh, ERA happened in just a few games. And again, the Reds are also scoring tons of runs as well. They got 153 RBI for Pete's sake. I think that might pace all of baseball. They do. Nope, oh, Mets have 163. Well, they're the two best teams in baseball. We'll look at a couple of individual players, but then we'll save most of that for the All-Star Game sell-up show. Just really quickly, your American League, Lo Mickey Lolich leads the league in ERA at 204. But way down here, Jim Palmer is 8 and 0 with the area 3. Expect those two guys to be in the All Star team. National League, yep, it's Don Sutton's world. We're living in it. Buck 85 ERA. Should be 8 and 0, really. His team let him didn't score in those two losses. Um. And as far as hitting goes, we got a couple 400 hitters in each league. Wes Parker pacing the Dodgers, doing it with a homer and 16 RBI as well at first base. And in the American League, Merv Ratman, surprising everybody. That card is 320. It's hitting 412. Expect those two guys who hit 400 and are everyday players to go to the All-Star game. That's it for the All-Star Break Wrap Show, and we'll have an All-Star Game Selection Show coming soon. Thank you for checking it out.